Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So I'm with Lee Stoffer once again. Lee, how are you doing? Very well, thank you, Zed. Excellent stuff. So Lee has made an appearance on two of my previous videos. One is about how to carve a spoon, which has been a really well received video. And the other one was showing my new tool set. So it's not a baby wrapped up as a mummy. This is a tool set. So if you haven't seen it already, what I would advise you to do is click on the link below this video, taking you to my new tool set. Um, now, well, as we were discussing the new tool, uh, tool set, which is for, for woodworking and more so spoon carving, um, it kind of brought up the natural uh, question, which was how do you maintain them, how do you sharpen them? Uh, but it's two spoon knives and two straight edge knives. Um, and so, it's something I wanted to learn and I thought with Lee's kind permission to share that with you guys to hopefully help you in your endeavours if you get either Lee's woodworking tools or just even using your own how generally to kind of maintain the edge on them so with your kind permission Lee what I'll do is I'll jump behind the camera we'll zoom in and then that's it Lee will show kind of some tips and strategies on how to kind of maintain the edge on your woodworking tools So Lee, so we'll start off with the straight uh, edge knife first. Indeed. Now obviously we need, we know that these don't really need sharpening as such. You'll obviously get much more apparent results if you're starting with a blade that's slightly dull and noticing that it needs sharpening. You'll really feel the difference when it is sharp. In the condition these are supplied in, they're, you know, they're ready to work. My advice would be to try and keep them that way rather than letting them get to a point where they're really dull and you, you know, notice a serious drop in performance. For the majority of honing work, all you're really going to need is a, is a, is a leather strop. Um, in this case, it's one with a wooden backing on it, so the leather's nice and flat. It's, you know, it's nice and stable, not stretching about between your, sort of your arm and your leg and trying to keep it tight. Got a nice flat surface to work on. If, for example, you needed to do more work than a strop would do you'd be looking at either in the workshop probably using your bench stones in my case they're water stones you can get diamond stones ceramic stones I tend to carry one of these with me when I'm out and about carving because it's, it's easily portable it's actually got a diamond side and a ceramic side so that you can use one of those to get you know to basically prepare the edge ready for ready for your stropping but this is what's going to give it the real sort of clean cutting keenness so you want to basically it wants to be sharp off of the stones. Stropping, you can easily blunt an edge as much as you could sharpen it. If you get the angles wrong when you do this, you can basically roll the edge and make it slightly slightly convex and, and just take the sharpness off of it basically. So it's important with this type of blade you've got a flat grind. So there is no you know, there is no convexness to it at the moment and there's no hollowness to it either. It is it's ground flat. So what you're aiming to do here is you've got your strop loaded up with some compound. And in your experience you find it's important isn't it to add on the compound? I, I, gen I generally add on the compound, you know, most times I, I go to the strop, that way you know there's a nice fresh coat on the top. You can see obviously it, it discolours because it's picking up bits of metal as it goes. And it, you know, it is very, basically removing a very tiny amount of metal, but in a similar way to you sort of polishing your car and it goes from dull to shiny, this is the process that we're looking at here. So. You want to start with the blade flat on the strop and then just rock it forward so the bevel, the shiny part, is in full contact with the leather but not to the point where you're actually standing it up so only the edge is in contact. You gotcha. want that full bevel in contact. And then it's just a case of maintaining some pressure. You can put a couple of fingers on the spine of the blade as long as you don't press it down and change the angle or you won't be doing anything. So you're kind of handling one hand to, to try and control that angle. A bit of pressure to make sure you're getting some you know, getting some actual material removed, you're not just sort of brushing it lightly across there. You've got to be a, have a little bit of firmness to it, but not so much so you're kind of denting the leather and again rolling the edge that way. So <clears throat> rock it onto the bevel, draw it backwards, and to start with, <clears throat> you can just do the straighter section of the blade in both directions, <clears throat> excuse me, without too much trouble. But obviously, that's not going to sharpen all of the blade. Where the blade starts to curve, we're actually going to, the angle's going to change very slightly because the blade also tapers. So as we come across the, as we're drawing back along the strop, we're going to come onto the curved part of the blade and at the same time very slightly lifting the handle to make sure that all of the edge comes into contact with the strop on the curved part of this blade. So that's one direction. Coming back the other way just so you can see it, I'll keep this hand out of the way. 
you're up onto that edge, you're rocking through that part and then always importantly lay it back down flat before you pick it up. A common problem is where people try and race off the end of the strop and they end up twisting the knife up as they come off the end of the course, they start rolling the tip of the blade. It's very important to maintain that angle and then sort of reset it to zero before you come away. Gotcha, I didn't know that actually. If you start to, say, if you just start to whip it off the end of the strop, you'll, you'll invariably change the angle just at the end of the stroke. So for me, it's quite important to stop before you get to the end and do it. Once you get the hang of it, I'm slowing this right down. Once you get the hang of it, you can do it quite quickly, but it's in quite important. I'm exaggerating just that stopping and putting the blade back flat before I take it off, just so that we know that we're not rolling the edge. And that should keep, you know, this knife carving sharp for a good long time until eventually you will start to lose some edge because you will start to roll it. it, it because this is a soft material, it's not as hard as a ceramic or a, or a water stone or a diamond stone. So there is a little bit of give in it. And when you're putting the pressure on, you will very slightly start to convex that edge. So eventually you'll need to take it back to your stones and go to a, a coarser stone, maybe something like a, a thousand grit, if it's still reasonably sharp. If, it, if you've put a chip in it or dropped it and done some damage, you may need to go right back as far as sort of a 200 grit to, to get that edge back. But this one's ceramic, again, same sort of thing. In this case, because it's a solid thing, you can actually push towards the edge. So you know that you're not gonna dig into this because it's a hard, stone so you can actually be pushing down and this way where we're drawing away here we're basically looking to clean off any tiny burr that's left on that edge from a from a harsher sharpening method with this if we push towards the edge what we're going to do is we're going to stop too much burr building up in the first place because we're kind of going to be removing it as we're sharpening if we drag away in this instance, you're going to end up with like a bit of tin foil hanging off the edge. Gotcha. It's going to be flapping around in the wind until at such time as you actually clean it off, whether it be with the, the stone that you're sharpening on or the, or the leather strop. But this is the main purpose of the stropping, is just to refine and keep that kind of polished, polished edge that's going to enable you to carve some really fine shavings. So for me, it's more when a knife's sharp, you should be able to take these really fine shavings along the full length of the blade without any issue really and some of this comes down to control and again so it's really good practice when you're sharpening your tools just to have a little stick like this and just see how fine you can make those shavings and when you can get them so they're basically see-through and really wispy that's when you know that you've got a really nice sharp edge as opposed to sort of like shaving the hairs off your arm or something this is going to give you a good indication that it's sharp for its purpose you know it's not it's not a razor blade i'm not going to shave with it so i'm going to carve wood with it so i want to know that it's very good and sharp for that purpose so you can go deep if you want but what you should be able to do is just pick up a, a really tiny tiny little shaving and progress that if your blade's nice and sharp Okay, so we're moving on to the smaller chip carving knife. Yeah, now this really sharp tip here, A is obviously really sharp and it's got a slight recurve on it. So what you'll find is when you come to strop this, you'll be coming back and what you can do is if you come around too far, you see it starts to dig in there and lift. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be very careful that we don't rock back onto that tip as we're coming round and sharpening the curved part of the blade. We want to keep the angle just right so that it doesn't come round and actually dig into the strop and create this track mark. Because A, it will start to knock the tip off the blade and B, it will start putting nasty drag marks into the strop and might stop it working so effectively on, on bigger blades than this. But it's exactly the same technique. I'm just putting a bit of pressure down with my finger wiping it across, but again, making sure that I'm starting flat, rocking it onto that bevel, and then maintaining that angle through the whole stroke in both directions. So exactly the same as the bigger knife, with just a little bit more care around the point. 
Gotcha. And do you know, we were just talking about the, obviously you, you're using kind of a sharpening stone, but indeed in, in, in the kit that obviously that you know, I got, you, know, you put some sandpaper and yep. you were talking about improvising, weren't you using that? And this so is it. Basically any, any <coughs> stone that you're going to use is going to, is going to be represented by some kind of grit value. Um, some, some stones are, it's difficult to identify the grit, but realistically, before you start stropping mm -hmm. any blade, you want to achieve a sensible level of sharpness. I'm quite extreme in the levels I go to for sharpness. Some people get to a thousand grit and say that's perfectly acceptable. You can yeah. just carve with that. And they're right, it will carve. What you will find is it will probably also leave us, you know, it can leave a slight texture to the surface of what you're carving. Depends on how sensitive you are to what you're, what you're making. Um, but in your case, the reason I've included this wet and dry paper, which is what this is, is the kind of stuff that you rub down car paint work with. It's what it was designed for. So it will basically it, sta it's, it stays intact when it gets wet right. as opposed to sandpaper. It would just wash off. Um, what you've got here is you've got a 1200 and a 2500 grit. So the green one, you'd see this when you peel off the actual uh, self-adhesive, but you've got, say, a... Uh, a 1200 grit and a two and a half thousand grit so if for example you you know you're honing you're you're stropping your knives and you're finding that you're not getting an improvement they're still not mm -hmm. as sharp as you wish you've probably they've probably been over stropped Why? basically so you're going to take that back a level and in this case say in your kit that you're going to be carrying about with you the reason i've included this is you can just stick one of these onto the back of your strop with the self-adhesive it's a nice flat surface on the back as well so you're basically going to be able to take that and again do your stropping, same action, because it's, a, because it's a paper surface, we're not going to be pushing towards it with the edge, we're going to be drawing it back like we're stropping, but it means that you can go back a level with the blade like this. I'm not actually going to do it because we know this is nice and sharp. If I just represent it on the wood, same technique, you're going to push up onto the bevel, pull it all the way back, keeping it in contact and lifting it, say laying it flat again before you lift off. And this will basically remove more metal than the, the compound on the leather so therefore you can if you if you've not got a good edge if you've just rolled the edge slightly hopefully a few passes of this will take off that slight convexing and give you a nice sharp edge again that you can strop right and maintain a lot of this comes with experience and you'll notice as you use the tools hopefully that you'll notice when they're starting to not cut as well as they did gotcha best thing to do is stop and pay attention to that then rather than carrying on and having to go too far back in the process. Okay, so now we're going to sharpen the um, the spork. What would you actually spork? call it? Spork? Spork. <laughs> spork. <laughs> Look at that, man. You can eat your dinner with one of those. I know. Thanks Is for putting this one in my mouth. I know. Scorp. Indeed. Right, so this is a bit of this is the trickier bit, really. This is a bit that nobody's really going to enjoy, but it's it's part of, you know part of the joys of sharpening a curved blade, whether it's a closed or an open blade. This again, we went through it in the other video. Ceramic rod from IKEA. They call it flaxer, I believe, um, and you'll find you should find it in the section where they sell the kitchen knives, and it's basically sold as an equivalent to a, a steel, a, a, you know, a chef's steel. A sharper you can say so you can use it to sharpen straight blades where i found it comes into its own is obviously with the scorps you can um get it inside right here whereas is you know you can't get a japanese water stain to fit inside there and they've got sharp corners and it just wouldn't work so this this works really well from the point of view let me just get rid of these bits if you've got once you've again your main sharpening routine should be keeping sharp, not yeah. you know, letting them get blunt. So this is a really fine grade ceramic, similar to the, the backing on that other stone. I don't know exactly what grit it is, but it, it's, it's pretty keen. You can see here, there's just a little bit of metal where it's, well, I've just had a little practice and it's just taken a little bit of metal off on there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take a lot off at a time. It's, you know, it's probably up there in the thousands in its equivalent grit. But this, so this is for the inside edge. And again, you can use this because it's a ceramic in both directions. What I tend to do is keep it in contact. You, you need to keep it in contact with the spine, with the with the spine, and with the edge. In right. between there is slightly hollow, so you'll notice. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you should have. You should be able to see like a bit of light catching on the edge mm -hmm. and on the spine. And what we want to do is make sure we're in contact with both of those surfaces. If you imagine that like a kind of a 
kind of like a train track. You want to right. make sure you're sitting on both rails. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the beginning here, right as deep as I can get into the nearest to the handle. I'm going to push it away from me, keeping in contact, and come up to the top. Then I'm going to go back get it the same way. Then I'm going to come up the other side and do the same thing. So I might be creating a little bit of a burr pushing away, and then I'm just as likely to be removing it coming back. Okay, and I'm going to keep going round and round like this. And this is the stage, obviously, before we before we get to the leather. It's probably not actually necessary on this blade because it's freshly sharp and ready to go. But that's what you're going to use, again, if, you, if it's gone slightly beyond that stropping stage. So then I've made up these, these leather covers we can put over. Again, load it up with this, this polishing compound. You were saying it's important to load up the welt as well, isn't it? Yes, that's right. The, the, the welt part on here, where you've got the stitching, the reason I've left that a bit on the long side is because obviously the, the stick is a certain diameter to you know, make it practical and strong enough to do its job but it won't get right down to where the edge begins about here because it's just too big a diameter to get into that space so when it comes to this bit you, you the welt actually does part of the sharpening for you which is why it's important to load it up with compound hopefully you can pick that up on the camera but yep. again doing the same thing I'm rolling through to the top and then because this is leather and I'm pushing away what I don't want to do is just draw this straight back through because it's just going to catch on the edge so I'm going to rock that down slightly and just withdraw it like that so that it's not anywhere near the edge as I come out. Again, engage the welt on this lower portion of the blade, work my way up in contact to the top and then back out. And once you've got the hang of the movement, this can be quite a reasonably quick process. And this is obviously just dealing with the inside bevel. It's a little bit awkward because I'm doing this so you can see it rather than how I would normally do it. So do it your normal post, let's see how you do it normally. How I would normally do it actually is in a vice if I'm in the workshop. Right. Um, but failing that, I'd like to be able to see what I'm doing so I'm going to get right up over it so my head's going to end up blocking your view basically. So I can see exactly what I'm doing, that I'm in contact with that edge at all times so I can see just exactly what's going on basically. And I'm I'm leaning on my leg here with the handle grip quite tightly so that the tool itself isn't moving around and changing the angle that I'm working at. So it's a case of just keeping yourself fairly, that's why I'm sitting down to do this one, it's just to keep it all sensible in, al in, in alignment. For the outside edge, you're going to be using the same, the same strop as we use for the straight blade. Again, give it a little load up with some compound. And same sort of technique, but on this occasion we have actually, although it's blended into a convex, we have actually got a flat, a flat grind that creates the edge. So you can find that bevel angle, make sure you're in contact with the edge, but also in contact with some of the rest of the bevel. And you're basically going to roll this up. Again, I normally stop at the top because it works for the, the length of the strops that I use. Just roll that up, making sure obviously you keep your fingers out of the way. I've made that slightly easier for you because I've put a couple of grooves down the side if your fingers to locate in a little bit. So this is for that side. I'm putting my thumb on the back here just to keep the blade steady, working my way up to the top and stop. And then for the other side, I tend to flip it onto my knee again so I can see what I'm doing, work my way up around to that top edge there. So just so I can see that I'm in contact with that and try and maintain that angle all the way around just to polish that steel so we've got a nice sharp edge. And then you go back to this one again. It's a com it's a matter of a combination. What you're basically looking at doing is at a microscopic level there will be little bits of steel just kind of hanging on to this edge. If you imagine like a magnet would attract metal filings. So yep. you've got these little wispy tiny bits of metal that we can't actually see with the naked eye generally but under a microscope you would see that they're just kind of hanging on the edge there and what we're looking to do is basically just just tempt them to fall off so we're just looking to lightly rub away at them until they so they just want to jump off that edge and leave that edge nice and clean so it's no good just working from one side all the time because right. you're just going to brush them all one way they're not actually going to come off right. so what we're looking to do is work from both sides in a fairly fairly regimented pattern. Some people say put eight strokes one side, eight strokes the other side, but eventually you want to get that down to kind of where you're doing a stroke on the outside and then you're going back and doing a stroke on the inside. 
just so that you make sure that you're not doing anything in one particular direction. What I would concentrate on with these scorps, because we've got this reference on the inside where we know we're quite flat, and we know also that we can quite easily change this angle on the outside, because mm -hmm. we've got no real, not, not so much reference for it, it's easier for us to go a bit deeper than we need to. So what I would do is concentrate on doing most of the work on the inside, right. and then just refining it on the outside so we're not in a position where we're likely to change that angle too much. So lastly, with the sharpening then. Yeah, just again, hopefully, we're gonna do most of our sharpening just using the leather strops. Right. You've got this, obviously, as a, as a pre-stage to that. Right. If, if, it's, if it's beyond that, if there's maybe a little scratch or a dent or a chip in the blade, for whatever reason, and this won't get it out. Right. Then what I've included again is these little bits of um, wet and dry paper. This is a 1200. I've pre-rolled these, so they're a nice tight radius and they've actually got a bit of self-adhesive on them as well so the idea being you can roll them around your ceramic rod put the sticky down and then you've got yourself basically a slightly coarser rod right. to work with gotcha. by using by using this 1200 grit wet and dry then again you'd go for the two and a half thousand then onto the stick itself then onto your your leather strop so it just just means you've got that little bit of potential if you do happen to damage a blade while you're out and about you, you should be able to you know take out the damage and get it back to sharp using the tools that you're you know the sharpening equipment that you're carrying with the tools gotcha and it's all fairly lightweight and portable was the, was the idea behind it if you know if you've not got any other alternatives you can just use a wooden dowel right. and wrap a bit of this around it and gotcha. you can get this up to about sort of 3000 grit right you could just use a piece of mdf to stick it on that's generally quite a nice flat surface that's what a lot of people use for sticking mm -hmm. their uh, sticking their wet and dry on so they there's, there's lots of different ways to use these various materials but to me the most important stage to master really is to is to be able to strop your blades without and actually make them sharper not blunter so that's where the real practice comes in with the with the you know with the leather and the polishing compound it takes a little while but once you've got your own technique and we've all got our own technique mm -hmm. as long as you stick to that and you you know you're sharpening your blades to your spec yep. you should be fine So there you have it my guys, a sharpening tutorial on Lee Stoffer's uh, tool set. So it was important for me to learn that as well because obviously the maintenance of, of your tools is just as imperative as you know how you use them. Um, and obviously, it's obvious thing to say isn't it, you know, the more you maintain them the longer they're going to last, the more proficient they're going to be. Yeah, so it, keep, keep them nice and efficient, it's safer, it means they work better for you. Yeah. It's a yeah. You know, nobody really likes sharpening, but it's yeah. it's part of the game. You have to play it. Yeah. So it's just a case of learning the right techniques that work for you. Yeah. That's what works for me. It might not work for everybody, but hopefully it'll give people an idea what they're aiming for. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's <laughs> definitely give me something to work. And this is something I'm going to be watching myself over and over again. And like I said, if you haven't done so already, this was pertaining to the tool set, wood carving tool set that you've seen uh, being demonstrated. There's a, la a larger scope. Indeed. Uh, we're going to say school kick in, right? <laughs> Getting tongue tied. That's a good one. Right? Uh, but what we're going to do is obviously, that's been demonstrated in another video, actually showing the tool set off in detail. Once again, the link for that is down below. Um, and hopefully, you found this uh, um, video informative. Like I said, I've done it for, for myself to learn, and obviously, I would have, Lee would have been showing me this anyway. So I just thought, this kind of permission, we can share it with you guys as well. Obviously, giving you some tips and and some techniques for your own sharpening. I know it's quite a common thing actually. I get asked a lot, like, how do you maintain this, how do you maintain that? So hopefully this video has been another one that can help you on your journey on maintaining that. And like I said, you can find out more about the tool set and uh, the amazing work that Lee does. I'm gonna be putting naturally links to Lee's social media below. Check him out on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Do you do carry a pigeon? Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. yeah. It turns into yeah. a pie afterwards, so <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to wipe that one off the list. But no, seriously, I want to thank you once again for taking the time out, Lee. Thanks, it, Ed. It's been an absolute pleasure. This guy's taught me a lot, man. He's teaching me, yeah, going out of his way, taking his time out to teach me a lot of things. Uh, and for that, I'm grateful. Um, grateful to yourself for teaching me a lot about the internet. So. Yeah, I know. What, what not to do. <laughs> that's, that's it. Teach you what not to do. But no, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Like I said, guys, hope you found this video informative. If you haven't subscribed already, click the button on the top right hand corner of the screen. You can subscribe to this channel and be made aware of any future videos, which there will be a lot of. Um, and like I said, hope you enjoyed this video. Please go and check out Lee. Links for him are down below. And as always, until the next time, 
whatever you do to hope you have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. This is Zed from Zen Outdoors. Peace out.